In this video, we're going to look at re-recording the outputs of these stem summing stacks. But before we do that, I want to do a little recap of what we looked at in the last few videos because there's a lot to digest here. Now, to start with, we've created multi-timbral, multi-output instruments and saved them as summing stacks. And these can be saved as patches in your library so that they can be easily instantiated in any project. Now, the idea is that we've used aux tracks as the subtracks in these summing stacks to receive the multi-timbral MIDI messages and also to route to the discrete multiple outputs available within the multi-out instrument that's instantiated. Now, this is a new kind of workflow and it's important to digest this. These aux tracks are doing double duty. They're working both as MIDI tracks and as output destinations and that's what makes it so efficient. Now, by default, the tracks in the summing stack are routed to the stack's main track, which is the top track here. So these are all routed to output bus 2, and this main track would receive the signal from bus 2. Now the subtracks, all the tracks contained within the summing stack, can easily be dragged in and out of the summing stacks. So that's great for workflows where you want to just be able to quickly drag in from your library or click in from your library and call up these multi-timbral, multi-output instances, but you're not sure ultimately what sounds are going to be on each of the individual subtracks. So you can easily drag them in or out to either place them loose in your tracks area or into other stacks that you might be using for subgroups or stems or whatever. Now when tracks are dragged out, their routing reverts to the default stereo output assignment. So they won't be routed as we see in this case of the subtrack that's selected routed to bus 2. It'll revert to being routed to the main output. And when they're dragged in, they're automatically rerouted to the stack's main track. So if I dragged a regular instrument I created in the tracks area into this stack, it would get routed to bus 2, which makes this great for using these summing stacks as stems or subgroups. So that's where we are now, and let's continue. We've got several of these stem stacks already created, and they each host several subtracks, and of course they're routed to the input of the main track in these stacks. All we need to do is reroute these to reroute all the subtracks that are contained within each stack. Now, in the last video, we routed them to physical outputs, each one to unique physical outputs, so that we could physically patch them into maybe a mixing board or another audio interface if you want to re-record in real time, re-record stems into Pro Tools or some other destination. But let's say we want to create the stems ourselves within Logic. It's fairly simple to do, and I'm going to walk you through it. Now, it's important the order of things that we do this in, and you're going to see why in a moment. First thing I'm going to do is create four new audio tracks in order to re-record these four stems. I'm going to go Command Option N to call up the new tracks box. And I have audio selected here and I'm going to create four tracks. Now what I'm going to do here is set the input to a bus rather than the physical input. I'm going to set it to a bus. Bus 9 is what I have selected because there's a bunch of unused buses there. And I'm also going to tick this option for ascending. And what that means is that each of these four tracks that are created are going to have the input set to ascending bus numbers. So let's go create, and we're going to see four new tracks here, and if we look at the inputs that set to bus 9, bus 10, bus 11, and bus 12. Now it's important that we did this first because what I want to do is reroute each of these out to those buses, and I'm going to change the output routing here now, and instead of a physical output, I'm going to route this to bus 9. And if I hadn't have created the audio tracks first, this would have automatically generated new aux tracks with the bus routing set with the input to correspond to this bus. And we would have had additional auxes and we could go into the mixer and delete those. But this saves us the trouble of doing it. It's more of an efficient way of doing it. So create the audio tracks to begin with, with the bus routing that you want, and then assign the outputs here as desired. So that one's going to be bus 10 to correspond to this second one. And this one will be output bus 11, and then the fourth stem to bus 12. So by doing this, we're not generating any unnecessary aux tracks in the mixer. And now let's rename these. I'm going to double click here and I'll call this Melody Keys. Of course, name it whatever you want for your subgroup or stem delivery. And now by record enabling these, I'll be able to hear the audio, as we hit play, the output of these are routed to the input of these tracks. So all we need to do is hit record, and we can record these four separate streams all at once. So 
I have the count off disabled. I'll hit record and we'll record some of this. So I stopped it manually, I didn't want it to cycle around, but here we have our four stems that were created. I'm going to option click these, I don't have to have them all selected, but I'll option click and that'll unrecord enable all of the tracks that are record enabled, it'll toggle the status basically. So I have my four new stems that are created and you can see here for example the melody only comes in halfway and you can see it only starts halfway here. And now if I play it back we'll hear our mix, it's a what you hear is what you get kind of mix. We're hearing them play back through these audio tracks. And if we open the audio project browser, we'll see our new tracks here. Let's option click this to close all the triangles, a nice new 10.0.5 feature. We can option click to open or close all of the disclosure triangles here. And here are our four new stems. So you can just pull those out in your finder and deliver those. So that's a little overview of how to use these summing stacks to manage stems. See you for more in the next video.